the All Progressives Congress in Bayosi State says it will appeal the Federal High Court's judgment disqualifying Timipre Silva, its candidate in the forthcoming governorship election. The ruling delivered on Monday by Justice Donatus Okorowo said that Silva had um, you know, been sworn in twice and ruled for five years as governor of the state and he would breach the 1999 constitution as amended if allowed to contest again. The judge stated that Silva was not qualified to run in the forthcoming November poll because he would have spent more than eight years in office as governor of the state if he wins and is sworn in. Also, the chairman of the ruling All Progressives Congress has described court judgment which disqualified the party's governorship candidate ahead of the Bielsa gubernatorial election as unfortunate. Unfortunate that uh, judgment, but we can say that it is democracy in action. But we learned that the person who took the issue to the court of law is not even qualified because he did not contest with the silver. Therefore, he's not even qualified for him to take the issue to the courts. However, we are appealing. We are waiting for the judgment and then we appeal for on that issue. This is a little distraction anyway, but it will overcome it. We believe the court, will, the appeal court will give us a positive judgment so that, uh, but that will not stop us from making arrangement for the forthcoming uh, election, which is coming up on the 11th uh, November 2023. Hmm. Well, Joining us this morning is constitutional lawyer and member of the All Progressives Congress, Barrister Andrew Nguata. Thank you so much for being here this morning. Yeah, good morning. Thank you for having me. All right. Uh, we do hope that the connection uh, may, as we continue this conversation, allow you to join in so we can see the visuals. But then again, since you're talking to us, it's good to have you join us. Um, we did see uh, that... It's clear, in clear terms, why uh, the courts is not allowing uh, the former governor to contest again, based on what the 1999 constitution says. But why is this starting to look like it's not holding water, especially with uh, the APC? Yeah, thank you. Uh, because uh, when you look at our constitutional jurisprudence, we've not had something like this before. And I say it because it's a normal point of law that the judge in his wisdom reads in his judgment. Namely that the APC candidate to be Silva, because he has taken his oath of office as governor twice. And the fact that if he's allowed to come in as governor, he would have exceeded the eight years constitutional period within which somebody can serve as governor. And I think it will help our viewers at home to understand the history that form, that informs the court decision in um, saying that um, Timmy Perceiver is not qualified. God issue of local standing as raised by our national chairman yesterday is also key because it is only an aspirant who participated in the primaries of a party's election, a primary election that can contest its outcome. But scholars of constitutional law, like my humble self, will also argue that this may just be a constitutional issue that does not come under the purview of the Electoral Act. But let me quickly go into the history as I earlier mentioned. Remember, Timothy Silva was first elected governor of Bayosa State in 2008. And of course, he took his oath of office that day on May 29th. And then, less than a year after he took out of office, precisely on April 15th, 2008, the appeal court removed him from office on account of an election petition that was filed against him and caught under the rerun. Successfully, he won that election and was sworn in sometime May, I think May 27th of 2008, to continue his term. And less than four years before, I mean less than four years, or rather less than four months before the end of his four-year tenure in office, that was sometime, I think, January 2012, the Supreme Court removed him from office. 
following which an election was done following month, which the prisoner brought in Syriac in Dixie. So if you compute the period he was in office, it was over four years, I think four years and about nine months. And he took hold of office twice. First, on May 29, 2007, then subsequently on the 27th of um, April, I think, yes, on the 27th of May, on the 27th of May, 2008. So that the court was right in saying that it was wrong for him to take hold of office twice. And I'll quickly bring up one very important point. You know, our constitution has been altered on four different occasions. In the first contribution, there was a new provision that was inserted under Section 285. And it said that everything, oh, I think that, that provision is under Section 180, I beg your pardon. Under Section 180, there's a new 2A under Section 180 of the 1999 Constitution as amended. It said in the determination of the four year term, when the rerun election has taken place, and the person earlier sworn in wins the rerun election, the time spent in office before the date the election was annulled shall be taken into account of. And I believe this was what the court based institution on. That the period between May 29, 2007, and when Silva was removed in April 2008, that period will be included in his entire term, whether he's a governor who won election for four years or six re-election. The issue of no first standard, Section 285 sub 9 of the 1999 Constitution says, for you to bring a pre-election matter, it must be brought within 14 days. And if you fail to do that, the actual status bar that's one leg of it. Then section 285 went further to define what, I mean, sub 14 of section 285 went further to define what the pre election matter is. And then there are two categories of persons who can bring a pre election matter. First, an actual, that the person who contested in that primary, then second, a political party. And in both cases, they can sue either INEC or the political party. But the man who brought that action is neither an aspirant nor a political party. But the fear I have is that we don't want a situation where the matter that goes before the Supreme Court and the Supreme Court will say, no, this is not, strictly speaking, a pre election matter. But one that God has all the Constitution and the Supreme Court can decide to apply the doctrine of necessity. Because when they when the drafters of our position pay this document called the nineteen ninety nine position, they do not say that anybody will stay in office beyond eight years. So that if our uh, candidate Silva is elected now, he would have exceeded the eight years constitutional means. Which can only happen in the event of war. Within the meaning of this new provision. Because there's only way for instance there's war. And it is the National Assembly that has the power to extend the tenure of either the president or a government of the state. So it's a real constitutional issue which I think on appeal, both the court of appeal and the Supreme Court will consider because it's a novel constitutional issue. All right. Uh, thank you for you know taking us through the journey up until where we have arrived now. Uh, what happens next? What are the next steps? Of course, there will be an appeal. If the appeal goes, um, what, 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 you know, I, I'd like you to give us a scenario of if the appeal goes in his favor and the appeal goes against him, what next? I, I, I believe and I hope and pray that the appeal goes in favor of the APC. Because uh, in view of what I think is the practice of INEC, because of that court judgment, in law, APC at the moment does not have the candidates. So for us to come back into the race, we have to win that appeal. And unfortunately, the window within which the party can substitute or withdraw its candidate is closed because the Electoral Act is quite clear on that. That for a political party to withdraw, it must, be, it must give 90 days' notice before the election. And remember, the election is just on the 11th of next month. So
So our best bet as the political party is for us to win that appeal. On account of the issue of local standard, one, because that person is never a political party, nor an aspirant. But two, on account of the fact that it is started fact. And I think the court will agree with this. Because there's a constitution that has made it so. So that even if you must bring an action within the meaning of Section 285 that talks about pre election matter, first, you must bring that action within 14 days, which is present, which you failed to do. Then second, you must, as a matter of fact, be either a political party to bring that action or an aspirant who participated in the primaries. So I think on appeal, the APC and our candidate Silva will be successful. But I think moving forward in the future, we have to be done second step. Imagine if it was an aspirant that brought this case. It would have been clear that APC will lose out and our candidates too, or maybe a political party. But because it was neither an aspirant nor a political party that brought that action, I think we'll be very successful on appeal. Hmm. Well, that's that's a tough one. But um, uh, let's let's just look at it from the other aspect of um, of um, other observers. Some have said that if indeed he's uh, sworn in, should he win? Um, he's going to exceed that eight years, meaning that's going to go through nine years. I know you spent time in your first comments in explaining um, how he got to office. You know, he was out. He had to go back again. How uh, the, the judiciary counted that as part of it because he was sworn in twice. But wouldn't this in any way affect uh, the constitution that was amended in 1999? Seeing that he's going to exceed um, eight years and going into nine years, should he win? Aren't you worried about that? Its effect. I think if 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 he wins, it's because uh, the necessary or the right thing was not done, right? And uh, you find that when he occupied office in two thousand between two thousand and seven and two thousand and eight, the alteration of the constitution at the time had not been made, right? So that this law was now amended in two thousand and ten, but because he's not contesting now, the position applies to him. So I think it was a part of the agency that made that mistake of not doing proper or due diligence. But you know, because these are laws that have been made, you know, amended, so I think it is the duty of our legal advisors to in the future they study the law in respect of nomination of candidates. It is an open secret that Silva took on what is twice. So how come our party did not notice this? Is it that we didn't have other students or we don't have other qualified persons that can be candidates of our party, particularly when he was already occupying the office of Minister of State Petroleum? So I mean, moving forward, political party should be that circumspect, particularly one that controls the federal government. You know? So I think it's one mistake that, unfortunately, you know, it's something that we must live with. And even if it's brought at the level of the election petition tribunal, it's a pre-election matter. And the tribunal is not continuing. It's a presidential matter, so to speak. Hmm. Well, I want to say thank you so much for joining us, uh, constitutional lawyer and member of the All Progressives Congress, Barrister Andrew um, Nwata. Thank you for joining us. We look forward to see um, an update, of course, as this story unfolds. Thank you. Yeah, th thanks for having me. It's a pleasure to be here with you. All right.